Hi everyone, I'm Mary with Mary Greeley News. Thank you for joining me. There was an earthquake off of Kichiro, Japan. USGS said it was a magnitude 5.0, whereas there in Japan they said it was a 6.1. It had a magnitude intensity, seismic intensity of a 3. And here's the different reports of sending out alerts and how long it took for different areas to get those alerts. Originally, they thought some areas might have a seismic intensity of 4. You can see that right here. Four people reported feeling this earthquake on USGS. And using Google Earth, here's the location of those earthquakes. USGS said it was over here to the west of this fault zone. Uh, Japan put it right along the fault zone. This earthquake is considered a oblique reverse thrust earthquake, meaning it had the same components as a normal earthquake, which would be a strike slip, but also it had the signature of a thrust earthquake. And I put a bunch of notes in here to explain it better. Large tsunamis are usually the result of reverse faults, reverse thrust earthquakes. There was no tsunami, no tsunami warning for this earthquake, though. The hanging wall moves up and over the foot wall. The focal mechanism is the opposite pattern as the normal fault. The hanging wall here moved, moving north over the fault. The first wave came from below as it rose up. Tension uh, was to the west. Here we have the focal mechanism ball, larger so you can see it. White is compression, and the blue area is tension. The first wave, here you can see, came from the west. On Geoscope, they had it listed as a magnitude 6.0. Here you can see as the fault moved. Here we got it rising up, and this is why it's called an oblique earthquake and you can see it kind of moved north east a little bit and then the hanging wall rose up so we got horizontal movement this indicates a thrust component too thus called an oblique fault the event that deviates from the idolized faulting type are mixed mixtures or as seismologists like to say an oblique event Oblique events can be a mixture of both strike slip and slip dip, meaning that fault blocks are moving both horizontally and vertically in respect to each other. Thrust earthquakes are generally occur when two slabs of rock press against one another. The pressure overcomes the friction holding them in place. So that's probably a lot to take in. And there was another earthquake here. This one here was a low angle reverse fault. That one moved east to west. Uh, that one was May 30th of last year. And then there was another one last year, but they did not have a focal mechanism ball for that earthquake. That one was on December 16th of last year. Using Google Earth, not only can you see the uh, fault lines here, you can see the smaller ones going up towards Kashiro. Now, the earthquake that I reported, what, two days ago, that one was down south over here. That one, too, was a thrust earthquake. And that one was probably a 6.9 to a 6.8. And that one, I believe, was there was a foreshock of a magnitude 4.4 before this uh, 6.8 or 6.9, whichever they decide later it's going to be. Now, earlier today, like I said, this was an intensity of a magnitude 3. There was another earthquake. I believe it was this one right here was a 4.6. So here on the Japan Meteorological page they have it as a level uh, four intensity luckily it was up in the hills i don't think there's many homes up in that area there is a road there you can see it there 
So using Google Translator, here's the different earthquakes. Um, maximum observed seismic intensity. We got a 4.3, a 4.6 intensity of 3. Uh, the 6.1 intensity of 3. They don't have it listed here. And if you look at the dates, there was only one earthquake for yesterday. A 4.5 intensity of 1. And right here is that 6.0 that was on, oops, excuse me, that was on the uh, 14th. That had an intensity of 4, whereas the larger one, which was today, um, the 6.1, that had an intensity level of 3. I would tend to listen to what Japan says about the magnitude of the earthquakes and the intensity level, because Japan was the first people, first country, to develop the beach ball and the fault plane solution, how the faults moved, what happened, how it occurred, was there spreading, was it a regular strike-slip earthquake, was it a thrust earthquake. But Japan was the one that originally developed the beach ball, or as is more often called the Falcon Mechanism Ball. So what are your thoughts? Put your comments down below. Thank you for watching. Uh, please subscribe. Please stay safe and please thumbs up my videos. And I'll talk to you later. God bless y'all. Bye.